Ashes of Creation community. I am Thais, co-founder of the Dungeon Crawler Network and From the Ashes. We are back with another Ashen News segment where we'll be going over any Ashes of Creation news from the previous week. On July 28th, 2017, Intrepid Studios returned with another live stream for the Ashes of Creation community. Announcing the ending of the summer crowdfunding campaign, Stephen revealed that they were just 50 participants away from unlocking the 2,500 backer goal, the summer exclusive housing furniture. Due to the small amount of people needed, Stephen said he would unlock it for all backers. The team also showed off their new Desert Springs landscape. This volcanic landscape offers more than just fire and brimstone, however. The landscape is dotted with colorful trees, rocky outcrops, and various multicolored standing pools of water that may contain environmental hazards such as steam or acidic qualities. There was also a fiery cave shown with red and orange crystals strewn about the cave walls and ceilings. It was even stated that a boss might just be lurking in or around the caves or volcano itself. Beautiful and obviously deadly, this environment will be available at the PAX West demonstration of Ashes of Creation. The team also showed off the 3D assets for the cleric armor. The pieces were confirmed to be of modular design and would allow for dyeing and customization on a piece-by-piece -piece basis. In addition to the 3D art assets, a few days later, via the company's Snapchat, they showed off their work-in-progress animations for the cleric to be seen at PAX West. Returning to the PAX West conversation, on the Ashes of Creation Snapchat, they revealed some of the concepts for the PAX West booth. The booth's most iconic feature is that players will be walking through a life-size divine gateway to enter the booth to meet the developers and to reach the demo stations that have been set up to allow people to preview the game. The team also revealed some of the physical merchandise that would be available for attendees of PAX. These items include lanyards, mouse pads, baseball caps, t-shirts, and hoodies. They also showed off race-specific pins that could be acquired as well as a PAX West 2017 exclusive pin that would only be available to attendees of this event. Future events might have other exclusive items to them as well. They mentioned that there would be unique cosmetics for use in-game to attendees of PAX West. Extra tickets to PAX West that Intrepid Studios had acquired have gone on sale on the official website. These being exhibitor passes, the standard attendee pass is going for $295 and the VIP package is going for $595. The VIP package is sold out by July 31st, but there was still some standard attendee passes available via the official Ashes of Creation website. Moving away from PAX, Intrepid Studios has announced the hiring of several new team members. Chris Myers, Senior Animator. Chris Atkins, Senior Character Artist. Javier Perez, Senior Environment Artist. Bernard Kaufman, Game Designer Joshua Eppel, Game Designer Ryan Richman, Concept Artist Finally, Intrepid Studios has released a brand new blog post on their concepts for grouping dynamics. Moving away from the modern MMORPG trend of having five or less players in a group, Intrepid is embracing the concept of having eight players in a party. The idea is to have a party slot for one of each of the eight archetypes available in the game. They take the time to outline some of the loot rules that they have been planning, which includes the standard Need Before Greed and Master Looter settings, but also a concept of a bidding system. Players would bid actual currency for the item in question, and whoever is the highest bidder gets the item, while the amount of cash bid gets evenly distributed among the other party members. 
like in the blog post, they take the time to outline their concepts for party roles, and that while the game has the standard tank, healer, and DPS roles, as well as the far less encountered support role, the team doesn't want anyone to feel pigeonholed into a single role, and that is where secondary classes come in. Allowing players to mix and match to achieve their desired role within a party, regardless of class choice. Be sure to stay tuned to our next episode of From the Ashes, where we will be analyzing this blog post in greater detail. Thanks for listening to the Ashen News. Please check out our website, DungeonCrawlerNetwork.com, for the full podcast episode, as well as our YouTube for links to our other podcast segments. You can find links to all of these in the description below. Thanks for watching!